Hello friends, I am Fidel Instructor Atul Dhale and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am really really happy to tell you that I have decided to create a series of videos of a legend, the pride of our nation, the 5 times world chess champion, also known as the Madras Tiger, Vishyanand. Since my childhood, I have always looked up to him as a big idol for me. I have worshipped him as a god and for every Indian chess player, he is the god of Indian chess. Well, he has played plenty of beautiful games in his life and in this series, we are going to look at those beautiful games. The first game which I have selected is termed as the immortal game of Vishyanand. In, in one of his interviews, Vishyanand himself said that this is one of his best games. Well, in this game, Vishyanand was white, his opponent Joy Luthier was black and it was played in the year of 1997. This game was very special because Anand almost checkmated his opponent in the center of the board. Well, without further delay, let's get started with the game and understand why this game is Vishyanand's favorite game. In this game, he started with e4, his opponent replied with d5, well, this is the center counter opening. One interesting thing about this opening is that on the previous day in the opening ceremony, the organizers decided to arrange a match against the representatives from the Swiss King Federation. This match was being played in the Switzerland. That's why it was happening like that. And each participant from the A and B group had to play two moves. And if the they didn't meet, okay, skiers within 24 moves, then the skiers will be declared as the champion. And surprisingly, in that match, skiers de decided to play the same opening which Jolliter decided to play here. Well, one more thing was also there that Joy Lidier did not play too much before this tournament and this move that is e4 d5 move came as a little bit surprise to Vishyanand. But as we all know, Vishyanand is a great, great player when he comes to opening. He is the best opening prepared player in the world. So he continued with e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3 attacking the queen on d5. Now the queen went to a5 square and a very natural move d4 trying to get more control in the center of the board and also freeing up the bishop on this diagonal. The bishop on f1 can always come to c4 and the knight will be uh, developed on f3 and we never know white might castle on the king side he might castle on the queen side or maybe he will keep the king in the center of the board. Well I will not tell everything right now just keep it for the future. Well, black decided to play knight of 6, developing a piece in this position. White also developed a piece with knight of 3. Both sides are controlling the center here. This is a very good strategy, I am telling you. Okay. So, black played c6. This is a very standard move because at some point, white might be playing bishop d2, putting some pressure on the queen. In that case, the queen should be having a space to go behind on c7 or d8. Well, here, after c6, there are few things which white can do. He can place the knight in the center of the board with knight e5 or there is also a very tricky line that is bishop c4. Well, bishop c4 is a very direct line because at some point black might be getting a chance to play b5 but what white is trying to do in this position, he is trying to just attack the pawn on f7. Well, here bishop f5 was played by Joel Etier and bishop d2 is a very common move. Okay, This is a very standard move but Anand as he knew that his opponent has not played this opening in his uh, previous games and he is little bit new to this opening. Maybe he had prepared this opening but Anand had one very interesting idea in his mind and he decided to okay, I am going to go with this opening. The idea is very creative and let's test my opponent. So he played knight e5 putting direct pressure on f7 square okay so black must play e6 in this position and the idea which was there in anand's mind was g4 this is a very aggressive move because now black doesn't really have that many squares bishop must go to g6 square and he continued with attacking play with h4 now the next idea is to play h5 okay the bishop on g6 is not going to be trapped because bishop can be played on e4 because the knight on c3 is still pinned in this position now black decided to play a very good move that is knight bd7. It is a good move. Okay. White Miss Anand captured on d7. After knight takes d7, he played h5. Now the bishop has only one square that is e4. Until now everything was going smooth. Anand has already played uh, or you can say this position in his home also. He had prepared it very well. Previously other games went on to play 
castle rook g1 and okay the position was equal even rook h3 was also played okay anand decided to play rook h3 in this position because he had some kind of ideas of his sleeves here his opponent played a very nice move his opponent was also very well prepared and he played bishop g2 the idea of bishop g2 is very nice if white decides to play rook g3 attacking the bishop on g2 then black will play bishop d5 and on any next move black will be very happy to play bishop d6 attacking the bishop uh, rook on g3 and he will be getting one tempo in this position okay so this was a very clever idea by jolliter but as i said earlier anand has prepared this opening in his home but his main intention was in his preparation was rook g3 but at the same you no know, when the position comes on the board you give a fresh look to the position and you understand something better in the position and that's what happened with anand he saw that he can play something else and that move was rook e3 the idea of rook e3 is very unique i'm going to show you after some two moves okay just wait for it here after rook e3 black can definitely play b5 trying to attack this uh, bishop on c4 okay if b5 is played then bishop d3 will be a good idea if b4 is played the knight will be jumping on e4 square and you can see the bishop on g2 is very poorly placed and at some point white okay will be on top because black must capture on e4 then white will be having two bishops in this position and he should be good okay so black decided to play knight b6 after knight b6 vishyanand decided to play bishop d3 and then knight d5 well here is the position which is very very critical in the game here vishyanand decided to play a very tricky move but for any normal player it seems that okay the rook on e3 is being attacked by the knight and i should move the rook but vishyanand is the world chess champion he knows what he needs to do in this position he is a top player in the world rook g3 might be a very normal move and it was already played in some of the games also that continued knight c3 b takes c3 bishop d5 bishop d2 queen a4 queen e2 and it was a little bit unclear position and eventually white player won the game but here rook g3 was not anand's preparation or you can say it was not his idea also he decided to play f3 in this position and this was a very beautiful move because now the pawn chain has been created here f3 g4 h5 and there is also one idea is that king f2 will be coming and the bishop on g2 will be trapped okay now black has some of the moves he can capture on e3 and he can even capture on c3 let's suppose he captures on e3 in this position then white can play bishop takes e3 then if okay black can play bishop b4 also but even if he plays that move king f2 is coming and the bishop on g2 will be lost but black has a very nice move that is bishop a3 here white must go for bishop c1 and then bishop b4 and white can play king f2 bishop takes c3 b takes c3 queen takes c3 the rook on a1 is hanging so bishop d2 bishop takes uh, queen takes d4 and after king takes g2 this position is not that clear but definitely i will prefer this position playing with the white pieces because two bishops are much more stronger in this position and if at any point okay at any point black decides to castle on the king side then you can see that these two bishops will be playing great role in checkmating black's king so black needs to be careful in this position so okay knight's uh, knight takes e3 was not played in the game and here black decided to play bishop b4 putting more pressure on c3 okay anand said like okay man whatever you want to do on c3 and e3 you do it that's none of my business i'm just going to play my king to f2 that is a safe square for my king and your bishop on g2 is forever trapped here in this position okay there is only one square for the bishop but there also king will be coming on g3 and the bishop will be lost in that case here black decided to play bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and then queen takes c3 now the rook on a1 is hanging so anand calmly played rook b1 in this position after this queen takes d4 was played and now black is putting pressure on e3 now here in this position what to do because your opponent has grabbed two pawns in this position he is even attacking the rook on e3 did anand make a mistake in this position well absolutely not he had seen a little bit further also in this position and he captured the pawn on b7 which was hanging in this case after rook b7 he already started seeing some interesting ideas in the position black obviously cannot really castle in this position if he catches then bishop takes h7 is a good move 
discovered attack is there on the queen and after king takes h7 queen d4 and white will be queen up in that case so castling is not any option in this position and that's why he decided to play rook d8 well instead of rook d8 okay instead of rook d8 if black decides to protect the bishop or save the bishop on g2 by playing bishop h3 then anand had seen a very nice idea that is rook takes f7 but as Anand said in his notes that he just saw till rook f7 and he stopped here thinking that white should be better but his opponent saw a little bit further okay that is a big surprise here c5 what he thought and he went ahead with the move rook f5 this is a brilliant move in this position and black captures on e3 then after bishop takes e3 the queen must go to b2 or some other square and white will just capture the pawn on c5 and he is on top even if black cap castles here then white can play king g3 attacking the bishop on h3 well this is not something which happened on the board on the board rook d8 was played and here already anand started to get the idea that at some point bishop g6 will be played then rook takes e6 will come king f8 will come and okay the position is not that clear because after rook takes f7 check king has the square on g8 and then he started thinking that if the king is on g8 square in that case, if my pawn is there on h6, okay, if my pawn is there on h6, then I can play rook takes g7. And when he understood this idea that before he goes for the bishop g6 move, he can play h6 move, okay. In the game, he played h6, but let's suppose he plays bishop g6 directly. Then what is really happening? If he plays bishop g6, then queen takes d1 is a good idea. Then rook e6, then king f8, rook takes f7, king g8 and white cannot really make any progress here that's why to make progress in this position he decided to play h6 this is a brilliant move okay to see the idea which is there in future is really really beautiful i really love this move and here g takes h6 was by played by jolliter and vishy anand unleashed his idea okay he unleashed his idea in this position by playing bishop g6 now the pawn on f7 is pinned the rook on e3 is going to attack on e6 okay the queen on d1 is also hanging we should not forget about that thing okay so black if he captures on d1 then what is really happening we should see here rook takes is e6 is a good move if king f8 then white has a nice move that is bishop takes h6 check king g8 and finally white will be checkmating black's king with bishop f7 isn't it so beautiful in this position that vishyanand had decided to sacrifice the queen and he was ready to checkmate his opponent just by his bishops and rooks. Well, it did not really happen. His opponent was clever. He did not capture on d1. Okay, another option also we should see in the position that instead of g takes h6, okay, instead of g takes h6, if black wanted to be in the game, then he should have played knight takes e3. Then after bishop takes e3, the queen will go to e5 square and now the queen is trying to come on h2 square. So queen g1 is the best move in this position and okay, the game might go on and uh, there are other alternatives also in the position. Even h6 g7 is there and the game will go on. So knight e3 was one of the best option but he played g takes h6 and now bishop g6 was played unleashing all the threats which we looked at now. And here black decided to play knight e7 and after knight e7, okay. White couldn't checkmate Black's king, but how he proceeded in this game is also very instructive. He just captured queen takes uh, d4, rook takes d4, and Anand showed his class by playing rook d3. A very simple move in this position. Then his opponent captured on d3, and the bishop on g6 is hanging. So what to do? Well, he brought the bishop back. He played bishop takes uh, d3. Okay, this was also one of the moves which might be possible in this position, but his opponent decided to play rook d8. Okay, that is also a safe move in this position and after rook takes d8, king takes d8, he just simply brought back the bishop to d3 and okay, in this position his opponent decided to resign the game. Vishy Anand played in a fantastic manner and he was almost going to checkmate his own. If that variation would have happened on the board, then it was just beautiful finish of the game. But okay, his opponent was strong, he did not allow it but still he just resigned the game because the bishop on g2 is not going to be survived and then in that case black will be pissed down that's why he resigned in this game so i hope you enjoyed this game you looked at this game and analysis also if you like this video do like share and subscribe to my channel see you in the next video which is related to, related to our legend that is vishy anand till then take care goodbye
थैंक यू